Medicine intended for the Israeli abductees in the Gaza Strip was located in the raid on the Nasser Hospital. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 135th day of the war. It is always important to remember that Hamas is an evil organization, a terrorist organization without values. For several days now, I have been reporting on the activities of the IDF and Shin Bet forces at the NASA hospital in Khan Yunis. Yesterday, these forces made a horrifying discovery when they found packets of medicines labeled with the names of Israeli hostages who had been kidnapped into the Gaza Strip on the 7th of October 2023. These medicines had been given to the Red Cross by the families of these hostages with the understanding that they would be given to the Israeli hostages. Hamas had agreed to this and everyone understood that these medicines were needed to manage chronic health conditions that these hostages had. These were not aspirins for headaches, rather they were medicines that people needed to take on a regular basis as part of a doctor prescribed program of treatment. Once again, all of this had been communicated to Hamas and they acknowledged it and agreed to deliver the medicines to these hostages and the Red Cross had said they would make sure Hamas followed through on this commitment. But now we know that none of these commitments were kept. This is not a surprise in the case of Hamas, but it is a big disappointment in regards to the Red Cross. I'm sure we have more to report about regarding this topic in the coming days. For now, you need to know that Hamas terrorists were using this hospital as a base for attacking Israel and the IDF and the Shin Bet teams that entered the hospital had specific intelligence about this. Inside the hospital, the IDF found many weapons, some of which were found hidden in a vehicle used by Hamas terrorists to carry out the 7th of October attack in Israel. Also, a vehicle belonging to Kibbutz Nir Oz, which was apparently stolen, was found in the area of the hospital. All of this is a violation of the laws of armed conflict. But I don't expect to hear anything about that from those voices who constantly criticize Israel for supposed violations of these laws. Another violation of international law that Hamas committed was firing on IDF troops from inside the hospital complex. This included rocket and small arms fire from terrorists who apparently decided they didn't want to be taken alive. So they opened fire on the IDF troops and were eliminated in the resulting exchange of fire. Among those who have been arrested, it has been determined that some of them participated in the massacre on October 7th. Some are also significant activists in Hamas. As I said before, the medicines that were supposed to be given to the abductees hostages were found in the hospital, but sadly, none of the hostages themselves were found there. It's important to note that the Shin Bet actually thought there might be some remains of hostages who had died in captivity in the hospital. Finding these remains and returning them to their families for a proper burial would have at least given their families some closure. But so far, even this modest hope has been denied. That being said, the IDF continues to invest all efforts, operational and intelligence to return our abductees home and the IDF will not stop until this mission is completed. One last thing that is very important to note is that the IDF stated unequivocally that the entry into the hospital occurred after an early warning to stop terrorist activity in the hospital and the scans were carried out while making sure to continue the ongoing management of the hospital without harming the patients and the medical staff and in accordance with the values of the IDF and international law. I will ask you once again to help us spread the truth about this situation by sharing this video on social media, but also send a link 
to your friends, to the officials in your communities, so that everyone would know what is going on in Israel and pray for the situation. Even tonight, the fighters of the commando formation continue to operate in the Nasser Hospital and in the areas adjacent to it. This is a large and complicated complex and it also includes a vast underground network of terror tunnels. The Paratrooper Brigade and the Nahal Brigade are also hard at work in the area, clearing tunnels, eliminating terrorists and confiscating enormous stocks of weapons and ammunition meant to be used against Israelis. The Air Force has also been in action to support the ground forces and working together as a team, they have successfully carried out many operations that have eroded Hamas's operational capabilities. In Judea and Samaria, Adia forces and an undercover unit of the border police attempted to arrest a wanted man in Tulkarim, but this man and his bodyguard decided to fire on the troops coming to arrest them and he was killed in the exchange of fire. Elsewhere, another senior Hamas official, Ahmed Ofi, was arrested. This operation also involved an exchange of fire with some of his bodyguards and one of them was neutralized before Ofi surrendered and allowed himself to be taken into custody. An IDF soldier was also hit and seriously wounded in the exchanges of fire. This man was involved in shooting attacks against IDF forces and Israeli communities and is also suspected of being involved in the murder of Tul Karim residents who are suspected of collaborating with Israeli security forces. In the city of Ramallah, another senior Hamas operative was arrested while two others were arrested in Nablus. All of these arrested suspects have been interrogated and the information they provided to the Shin Bet will be used to take the next steps in dismantling Hamas's terrorist infrastructure in Judea and Samaria. This is vital important work because the threats to Israel from Islamic terrorism have grown to enormous proportions in recent years. Israel is at war with Hamas and any terrorist organization that threatens the citizens of our country. Together we will defeat this evil. I want to conclude by saluting a hero of Israel who fell defending the country, Sergeant Simon Shlomov, 20 years of age, from Kiryat Bialik, a fighter in the Parachute Brigade. He was killed yesterday in the battle in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Once again, I will ask all of you to continue spreading the truth with us. Share and follow us and don't forget to pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem.